Hello, 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 and welcome my beautiful friends and family to another acne video. And in today's video, I wanna teach you about the science of acne, at least based off of scientific studies that I found recently that I'm really excited to share with you guys. So there's gonna be a little bit of science in there, but I wanna make this video because I break out from time to time now, and a lot of people think that I've gotten over the breakouts and they'll never come back ever in my life again. But just simply, the science does not say that. You still will break out even after you've cleared the majority of your acne, and that's completely okay. It is seriously, Fine. So I'm going to break down the science of it, but first I'm just going to tell you what the science actually says, then we'll go through kind of the more boring parts and read the study for those of you who are interested. Alright, so I'm reading this from a figure that was included in the study that I'm talking about, and here's what it says, is the compounds of Western diet cause acne, and these are the things, high total calories, high glycemic load, glycemic meaning high sugar foods, high fat intake, high alcohol intake, and that's very interesting because I don't mention that too much because I'm not someone who drinks a lot of alcohol, but that is something to think about. High dairy protein intake and high meat intake all are contributing factors to acne. So just based off of those things right there, right now, what are the things that you are you know, committing? What are the things that you're violating right now? I would love to hear it in the comments because a lot of us don't think about a lot of these things and a lot of general advice that we've gotten or even the advice that I've given on my channel before is anecdotal and it's things that have helped and it makes sense. Like the three things I always say is remove dairy out of your diet completely don't even have any percent of any dairy in your diet increase your vegetables quite significantly and have a lot of water and it actually makes quite a bit of sense based off of these things because you don't want to have dairy vegetables if you have a lot more of them you tend to not have as much sugary food you tend to eat a lot less calories and with water obviously I feel like that's always good for anything at all because it's flushing out toxicity it's helping balance your body and it's just helping your body be better in general. So even right now, just from the kickoff of this video, you've already learned a few things, or at least hopefully, you at least have a strong evidence that these things do cause acne, and you can be aware of what you're doing with your diet, and what you're eating, and how you're you know, treating your body in the future. So now I'm gonna actually go through this study, and I'm gonna read through some of the stuff that it says, and break down the science behind it. And this might be a little bit more boring, but I wanna, I wanna really prove to you what is actually happening, and why it's happening, um, as well as just giving you those general tips in the beginning. So I wish there was more funding, and I wish there was more studies done for the the dietary effects on acne because currently there just isn't as many as there should be but from the ones that have come out recently we've actually found out some pretty interesting stuff and there's something in your body called mTORC1 and what we found is that when mTORC is activated when it's higher inside of your body it actually activates your sebaceous glands which are the glands on your face that cause you to produce oil and it causes us to release sebum oil and that is what causes acne if you have any clogged pores then that sebum oil builds up and that's how you get whiteheads blackheads cysts etc and in the study, what we have out here is it says overactivated mTORC1 increases androgen hormone secretion and most likely amplifies androgen driven mTORC1 signaling of sebaceous follicles. Also, mTORC is stimulated by quite a few different things, as I just told you in the beginning of this video. But in the study, it says these new insights into Western diet mediated mTORC1 hyperactivity provide a rational basis for dietary intervention in acne by attenuating mTORC1 signaling by reducing. One, total energy intake, so the amount of calories you're eating. Two, high sugar, hyperglycemic carbohydrates. Three, insulinotropic dairy proteins. And four, leucine-rich meat and dairy proteins. Meaning, so just going over that point from my point of view, I'm someone who lifts weights and I have to get a lot of calories in it. I gotta get a lot of protein. Well, not a ton of protein. I've found that actually it's quite a bit less, but I'm very focused on getting a lot of calories in. And so that's something that I can't change. If I wanna continue lifting, I wanna continue building muscle, I have to. And I know a lot of you guys are also into fitness, and so that's something that I feel is out of our control if we're trying to put on muscle. But there are things that are in our control. Like for example, we don't have to eat high sugar foods. We don't have to eat tons of dairy or any dairy. We don't have to have uh, alcohol in our diet. I strongly believe that by reducing the amount of these things that I'm explaining in this study that you are violating, you will decrease the chances that you'll have as much acne and it will be able to reduce the severity of the acne that you do have. So another thing that I thought was really interesting is that I've concentrated on mTORC and when mTORC is raised, it causes you to produce more oil which causes more acne but there's actually something in your body called it activated protein kinase or AMPK and that actually acts to regulate your mTORC and so basically it brings down your mTORC so that you don't have as much acne and you don't have as much oil production when you are violating some of the things like having high sugar diets. In this study it says liver kinase B1 and AMP activated protein kinase AMPK are critical regulators of mTORC. So again the way that we eat actually suppresses AMPK which isn't good because AMPK is what helps us reduce mTORC and that in general 
general helps us have less acne. So what we do with our Western diet generally is do a lot of things that increase mTORC, which is causing acne, and then we do a lot of things that decreases AMPK, which is supposed to help your mTORC lower, which would help you not have as much breakouts. Now I'm gonna read you that, that figure, that table two, that I read you in the very beginning, because in the study it says, the Western diet provides abundant energy, glucose, and fat to suppress AMPK activity, increasing mTORC signaling. And here's the, the table here. On the left side it says the compounds of Western diet, and then it shows the mechanism on the right of how it will either increase mTORC or reduce AMPK. And it says high total calories, which is high energy, will reduce AMPK, as well as high sugar or high glycemic load, high fat intake, and high alcohol intake. All of those reduce AMPK, which makes sense if you think about like, you know, in, in terms of real, like actually applying it to real life. Think about like the last time you ate a, a bunch of really fatty and sugary things, right? So like you went drinking or something like that, right? And then you had a bunch of mixed drinks and sugary alcohol drinks and then later that night you had a big dirty fat deep fried whatever and then you wake up and you have acne or the next day you have acne after that it makes sense it's like I feel like it's all this stuff that we already have experienced and a lot of us anecdotally are like yes don't do high fat don't do high sugar etc etc but we just haven't had the science behind it we haven't had the studies to actually explain it and a lot of times people will say whenever you say anything about diet they'll say oh no diet contributes none at all and especially dermatologists would do this especially when I was going to my dermatologist he would completely deny that any diet had anything to do with acne until I was seeing him for about six months and then nothing had changed at all with any of the antibiotics or anything that he was giving me. And he finally was like, there may be some evidence that we have seen some of our clients actually reduce their acne by taking out dairy. And that was the only thing he said was just simply removing dairy. Actually, he specifically said whey protein. So he actually didn't even mention dairy. He just said whey protein. And then the table goes on to say high dairy protein intake equals high leucine. High meat in intake equals high leucine. And those uh, will increase mTORC activity. Activation. And of course, I know a lot of people who are more, more knowledgeable about you know protein sources and fitness. High leucine is something that in general, when you are bodybuilding, you end up getting. Uh, and because people eat a lot of protein when they are trying to put on muscle, you tend to get a lot more leucine. Whether you're doing it uh, vegan or not, as a lot of you may not know, I'm a plant-based bodybuilder, so I don't have any dairy or meat at all. But a lot of people will overshoot their protein sources hugely. Like when I first started bodybuilding, I was trying to get two grams of protein per pound I weighed, which meant that I was getting 200 to 350 grams of protein every single day, sometimes even more than that. I was just pounding myself with so much protein. And that meant that not only was I violating a lot of these things like dairy and stuff, but I was also getting huge amount of leucine, which I didn't need. And if I was still trying to shoot for you know, 250 to 400 grams of protein on a, on a vegan diet, I would still generally be getting a lot more leucine, even though there's a lot less leucine uh, in, a, in a general plant-based diet, you would still be getting tons of leucine because you are eating so much protein. Luckily over time, I've kind of improved the way that I have my bro science knowledge and I've tried to get more factual and factual and understand more science and stuff. And I, like I said, I used to eat so much protein and now I'm 201 pounds, I've gone in the last uh, maybe about three or four months from about 184 pounds to now 201 pounds. And I do that and I've done it for years now. I'm, I'm three and a half years into my vegan bodybuilding experience out of my 10 years of total bodybuilding. Uh, I've done that by it going to about 100 to 140 grams of protein. That's what I aim for. Sometimes I go a little above, sometimes I go a little lower, and it literally hasn't changed how I bulk or diet or how I put on muscle or how I condition or anything that I've done. It's literally exactly the same, which tells me that none of us need quite as much protein. And so if that's something that you do, I suggest maybe seeing if you can decrease your protein over time and just seeing if you still hit the same amount of progress, see if you still hit the same amount of goals, and it probably would help you quite a bit to lower your protein. So that is it for this video. Kind of a, a short little topic and, and pretty simple really. Uh, I just wanted to give you what it means first and then show you the science behind it because this is a new study that I've mentioned once on the channel before, but I wanted to mention again because I think this study is underappreciated and I think it really tells a lot. So I will be putting the link to the study under this video if you wanna go through it. It is a very long study with lots of science words and stuff, but I do encourage you to go through that if you are interested. And for those of you who ask me, cause I get this comment a lot, people ask, I currently do take a whey protein or a casein protein, and is that okay? And I always say the same thing, 
and based off of this knowledge, it makes sense now, don't take any dairy, absolutely 100% cessate it from your, from your diet. Not even milk powder in the back of the ingredients on a, on a bread or something like that. Zero servings of dairy every single day. If you are looking for a protein powder that you want to move to, I know this is a little bit of shameless self-promotion here, but I'm currently with a company that's called Vivo Life that makes a raw plant protein that is super digestible. So I know a lot of people have digestion problems when they take whey and casein. I definitely was always bloated and would be like full of uh, water and I'd have a, like a moon face is what I would call it. Vivo Life makes all this stuff raw. They have a ton of like really cool superfoods that are in there. They have like reishi mushrooms in there. Their greens have probiotics, which is a really important thing for people with acne too. You need to balance your gut flora. So if you have a lot of bad bacteria and not a lot of good bacteria, it's good to get a probiotic in there. I want to do a ton more acne videos. So if you have any ideas of what you would like to see on my channel, I have a list that I'm building and I just keep looking at it and recording a new one every couple of weeks. So if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them in the comments. If you enjoyed this, make sure you give it a big old fat thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed to my channel already. Team Beyond the Week. C.T. Lift heavy or die Myron, motherfucker. Team mm. Beyond the Week. C.T. Lift heavy or die Myron.